Hello and welcome to this video on the natural language framework on iOS. Text is something that is available in basically every app there is. We use text as the main way to present information to the user, but also to collect information from them. Text has so much information saved in it. But at the same time, it's really hard to pull that information out. Unlike numbers, text is really unstructured, there's a lot of variation and complex structure behind it. Luckily, we have the natural language framework available from Apple on iOS, tvOS, macOS and watchOS. This is a really powerful framework and I want to give you a quick overview over its capabilities in this video. I will also go into more detail about how to use these use cases in later videos. So definitely let me know in the comments which one you want to see. The first use case I want to present you is language identification. This is actually as easy as just taking a string and putting it into the framework. It will give you the most probable languages that this text is written in. Now, where could this be used? I have two examples in my mind. The first one might be to get the language that the user uses. This might also be possible with the locale, but some users, including me, might have their language not set to their native language, but to something else like English. In this case, we could use the natural language framework to offer the user the option to switch between languages. The second use case would be a news app. Text in a news app can come in different languages. If we identify these languages, we can actually proactively offer the user to translate them which will lead to a better user experience as we proactively offer the user to improve his experience using our app. The second use case I want to give you is tokenization. Now, I might need to explain what that means. Tokenization describes the process of separating our text into the semantic units it consists of. Right? Okay. I might have made it worse, so let's take a closer look here. This is the official documentation from Apple. Notice that we can take this text here and hand it to the tokenizer. It will then give us the separate words from this string. This might sound trivial at first, but for example, it does some really smart things. For example, it removes the punctuation here. Also, we can give it different options to not split it into words, but into sentences or paragraphs. Notice that this is also something that goes well together with the next use case I want to show you. And the next use case I want to show you is the lemmatization, which is also called stemming. It describes the process of transforming a word into its basic structure. Now, this is again a little confusing maybe, so let's look at an example. We want to build a search function into our app. The user can input some text and we want to search the content of our app for matches. Let's assume the user inputs the word playing. Now we can check our content and find the matches, but what if some content has the word played in it? So the past tense of the word play. Now a simple check for this string playing won't match with this content. However, it might be interesting to show to the user. This is where lemmatization comes in. If we transform playing and played with lemmatization, we get the stem of the word back, which is play. And it will instantly improve the results of our searches if we do that, because we will find way more words which have the same semantic meaning not only the same exact structure. Notice that lemmatization is also one of the most important pre-processing steps in machine learning. So if you want to prepare text for later stages of machine learning, it is very common to first use tokenization to separate the string 
into its different components and then use lemmatization to get the basic structures of the words. Therefore, we have more semantic comprehension as well as less data, which is almost always better because it amounts for less training time and quicker inference. The next use case I want to show you is word embeddings. This is a really cool concept and I will quickly describe it to you. It takes some time to fully understand what that means and I can highly recommend Apple's article on that and I will link that below the video. Now you can think of word embeddings as each word lying in a large point cloud and having a certain position there. We can represent the word by multiple values describing its place in space. So this is described as a vector. Now the cool thing here is that words that are close in semantic meaning are also close in proximity in the word cloud. The process of creating this is pretty complicated, but the cool thing here is that Apple gives us this right out of the box. Now I want to give you a quick example what this can mean. So if you look at the words Apple and iPhone, they would have a close proximity in the word cloud. Now this is pretty easy, but let's think of the word orange. Now, Using word embeddings, this would also be close to the word apple, but not so close to the word iPhone, as it's describing fruit, but not a smartphone. I can again think of two examples here. The first one is text-based search. If the user is searching for a certain term, we could look up similar words in the word embeddings and suggest them as search cases as well. The second one is similar content. If your app is presenting text-based content, we can again look for content that is close in proximity to the other one and present that to our user, which might also be interesting for him or her. Word embeddings is something that is again heavily used in machine learning and specifically in natural language processing. It has some cool words such as glove, word to vec or bird. And I would love to go into more detail, but I will save that for a later video. The next use case is named entity recognition. It allows us to identify people, places and organizations. It will simply identify these entities from our text without us needing to do anything else. This enriches our ability to show the users relevant content. One example could be a messaging app. The users might be writing about a certain place to visit, for example, a restaurant. Now we could show the users additional information about said restaurant without them specifically asking for it. They could also write about an organization and we could show the stock prices of that. These kind of abilities can really lead to magical experiences uh, with these smart features that we have for our users. The next capability of the natural language framework is part of speech tagging. This identifies the parts of a sentence such as verbs, nouns or adjectives. This can again be used to better understand the intentions of our users. This is done every time we enter a command at a voice assistant such as Siri, Alexa or Google Assistant. It will take the command and deconstruct it into its integral parts to better understand the intention that we have. Again, this is something that we can use to better understand what our users are inputting into our apps. I want to quickly touch on custom language models. It is possible to train your own language models, but this will extend the capability of the natural language framework. You will actually need some juicy CreateML for that. Ooh. I will cover how to do this in a later video. I do want to quickly mention though, that it does not require expert domain knowledge or a PhD to do this. If you have a clear task in mind and some decent programming skills, you will be able to do this. A good friend recently mentioned 
that he thinks that Apple is democratizing AI. And while this is a pretty bold statement, I would agree on the fact that they are definitely doing this on mobile. They always have some great abstractions for us to really make it easy to use these frameworks. I hope this video gives you a quick overview over what is possible with natural language framework. I'm really excited about the field of natural language processing and I think it has some huge potential for improving our apps. The most common question I get asked by other developers is, well, that does sound magical and all, but how can I use this in my apps? Which problems does it even solve? I think this is an excellent question and the exactly right approach. We shouldn't just use it to write ML on our apps and get a ton of money from investors, but we should really think about how we can improve the experience for the user and how we can give our apps superpowers. Well, that and the ton of money thing too, right? I hope I have shown you a few examples what is possible when developers will take machine learning and natural language processing into their toolkit to build great apps. I hope you enjoyed this more broad overview over the topic and let me know which topics you want to see discussed in more technical detail. Thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you soon. Have a great day.